Hey there friends, it's Lee here from The Appalicious Teacher and today I'm going to share with you a quick little tutorial about using Google Sheets to create a lesson plan template. Now I discovered this um, back when I was taking over for a teacher for her long-term sub. She was going on maternity leave and she used Google Sheets and at first I was like, oh man, I don't really want to use this. I am a dedicated planbook.com fan. And so I was like, I don't want to have to adjust. But actually, once I started using it, I kind of fell in love with it. And I think it's genius. So today, my focus is to kind of share with you. Um, I'm going to use a template that's a freebie um, that you can grab. So I'm going to share with you my template and then show you how to like do a couple things in there to make it very user friendly. So first off, um, we have kind of the base um, and then each base is going to be a week. So we will, let me move my head. Let's move me over here. Okay. So you're going to see your tab here and you can rename the tab. So you can call it like your first week of school and then add in like your date. So maybe you start August, you know, um, let's call it eight ash. What's a week in August, man. I'm so prepared, aren't I? Whatever. Eight, 16 through eight, whatever, uh, you know, 23. It's a very long week. Okay. So let's pretend that that's your first week of school. Okay. So we'll t title that. Now you can go in and type up and change these, but I'm going to first show you how to duplicate the tab for your next week. So when you're ready to like create another week, you can go to duplicate. And it'll actually make a copy and then you can change this and add your week. So it's the same thing, just a new week. So that's how you can duplicate the spread. So you're going to want to get it how you like it. This is just a generic setup. It's based on what I used when I taught um, and took over for that teacher. So you're going to see there's blocks here on the side and then across is the week. You can change that. You could put your days of the week here and then put your blocks across. I just, my brain works this way. Like I want to see everything down, Tuesday down. Um, so you can go in and double click to change and like add your own detail. So for example, like maybe you don't do a morning routine. And so you can take that out and make it something else. You can delete like a whole thing if you want, like highlight the the um cells and then press delete um if you want like if you don't need that cell um there's also color coding you can go through and change the color just click the cell that you want to change and then go to the fill up on the top and then you're going to see there's like custom colors in here for you to use you can just click on one of the custom colors that have been added or choose your own if you want. It's up to, entirely up to you to customize this. Um, the font that I'm using is like a default, it's Delurus, Delurus. Who knows how to say that, but you can change it to any, any of the Google fonts that you like. Um, you know, if you want to get fancy, maybe you do like Pacifico, like in some areas and then whatever, um, Roboto is always like a nice classic clean font. Um, you can do Montserrat is a good one. Oswald is a good one too. Um, but this is the one that I'm using and I kind of like, it's like teacher friendly looking. It looks like teacher handwriting to me. Um, you can add cells as well. You just right click. And then insert, you can insert a row, which would insert this way. You can insert a column. So if you want to add, like right now, there's a section for notes. If you want to add like another section, you can. Um, and anytime you want to go in and like change, you just double click it and put it in. Now, um, when you work in Google Sheets, as opposed to like any other word processing thing, usually when you hit the return button, enter, it takes you down to like the next line. In Google Sheets, it takes you to the next cell. So to sidestep that, you're going to press shift and enter. 
Oh, that wasn't right. Control and enter. Control and enter on a PC. I don't know if it's the same on the Mac. But control and enter, and that'll return you to the next line. So if you want to do like a list, like here I have like a list, you can do that down here. Um, you know, you can like list out things here. I have some student names like in a list. So if you want to make a list like that, you would do that. So to edit this and make it your own, you can add your own colors. You can add your own time blocks. Um, I like very detailed lesson plans. I know that is not the norm for all teachers, so you can customize this as much as you want. But the major things are you can change the colors, you can add in things, you can arrange the size. Like if you don't want notes so big, you can pull it out, push it in. Um, if you don't need like this cell like colored in, you can like highlight the whole thing and then take off the coloring. Some do. There we go. Um, you can like add in your times. Like the way that I was teaching, I taught two blocks a day, a morning block and an afternoon block. So instead of writing morning plans and afternoon plans, I would just write one plan and then talk about how I would change it for the afternoon time because my afternoon was um, a hybrid class instead of just a um, in person class. So my morning class was all in person. And then my afternoon class was half in person and then half students would actually come in simultaneously. And we would do and I would teach. And so I had to kind of modify a lot of the lessons for that. So you'll see like there's like an A group and a B group. And that's really was just I was just planning for the B group. It's separate how I would differentiate that lesson for that group. Um, so you can change this however you want, add different colors like I showed, change your times. Um, if you, um, I showed you how to do the cells. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, oh, like I have like things bolded that I wanted to really kind of like be like, focus on this, like over here, like the day. Um, to do that, you just highlight what you want bolded and then press like the B, B just like you would on a Word document. Um, you can italicize stuff too, highlight what you want to italicize. I usually italicize like what the skill focus is. So it's like, no matter what I do with this lesson, here's our main focus. We're teaching this rule or we're teaching this concept. You'll see it's like down here in whole group reading to like, we are working on understanding mean idea and details. Like that's our goal statement today. Um, so yeah, so honestly, I feel like this is my new favorite way to lesson plan. It was so easy to use. And once I kind of got the hang of it, I loved being able to just quickly copy and paste. The teacher that I was subbing for had her entire year, like, the cells out with each of the weeks and then she kind of used it almost like as a planning tool too and would go in and put like any special things that were happening that week that she could plan for like if she knew assessments were going to be done this day or if she knew she would put it in so that when she got to that tab she could just very easily um you know when she got to that tab for lesson planning she could just you know um like add that into her lesson plans because it was already there um and you just do that by copying and pasting out the tabs i don't think i would actually work that far ahead because that makes me kind of nervous that thinking but if you want you can now one of the biggest benefits for using a google sheet of any sort is the fact that it's very shareable in a digital way so you can share this um, and you are going to want to change your restriction so that you can, um, you want anybody with a link to be able to look at it. So like if your administrator needs to like, they do lesson plan checks. I remember this is um, very common. Like I've had to do this for many years where you either a submitted a lesson plan copy to your principal one year or a few years I worked at a school we had to print a second set of lesson plans and put them in our mailbox and then she would go around and like check them another year we had to have them printed and put on our desk and if she came you know the principal came through they would just like do a little check mark or something like nothing big and then when I switched districts it became a little more formal we had like a shared drive and we had to 
um, you know, submit our lesson plans in the shared drive. And we would get an email if they weren't there by the, you know, I think it was like Monday. You needed lesson plans by Monday morning loaded. So this is a great way because you would just upload a document to your shared drive or wherever it is that you're housing and just click the link in there. And at any given time, they can actually see live lesson plans. So like if you're changing something, they can see that you changed it. Um, you know, the principal that I was with before, like would go in and, um, you know, kind of look before he would do a walk-in. So he could kind of see like, hey, this is what she said she was going to teach. Kind of gives me an idea. So when I come in, what I'm going to see. And, you know, a lot of times like um, it was, that was kind of like a nice primer, especially if you're like rearranging some stuff. Like I do a lot, like Oh, we didn't get to it. I'm going to copy and paste it for the next day. Like I'm very like stickler about my lesson plans. I know a lot of teachers aren't. I've taught for 13 years. I'm going to tell you it's the best thing I do for myself. I call it the gift I give myself because I will completely forget what I lesson planned for that week and I will get off track very easily. And it's so easy for me to just go back to the lesson plan and be like, what was the purpose of this again? Oh yes. Why did I pull this book again? Okay. I get like, I don't even know. Like I can't seem to remember things sometimes. So that's helpful. But anyway, so you can share your lesson plan link with your, whoever it is that wants to check lesson plans. You can put it in a Google doc, you know, and then save the Google doc, download it as a PDF, however it is that you need to. And they can like look at like the actual live link. You can also print these out. So I know for the old district I worked for, we had to submit our lesson plan book at the end of the year as documentation that we were teaching the standards. And that way if our school was audited by the whoever does auditing. Each teacher had to have lesson plans and they would need to see lesson plans for every week. They wouldn't go through them. It would just be like making sure the lesson plans were there. So if you need to print them, you can do file, download, and then there's options on how to download. The most easiest way I'm going to say is Excel, but you can totally download it as a PDF. Excel leaves it editable. A PDF will make it not editable. So like if you're just printing it out at the end of the year so that it can be submitted for documentation purposes, downloading as a PDF will be your best bet. So download it as a PDF because it'll kind of secure everything exactly how it is, almost like a screenshot. <coughs> And then you can print that PDF. So let's go to download PDF. And there you go. You can see exactly how it'll look. Okay. So that is a quick little walkthrough on how to use Google Sheets for lesson planning. If you have any other questions, just comment on this video. Let me know and I'll try to answer them. I hope you enjoy this free resource and I hope you have a great day. Bye.